Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim or Sim Naya, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So, I do not know the kind of uh, hatred that will make somebody come out to say that uh, he would uh, rather choose slavery instead of seeing a black woman become a president or a mixed breed become a president. And then he went further to say that uh, you can give me white president, you know. And uh, a descendant of slave president or a Miss Lily type of white woman president, but not a black or mixed woman as a president. And I am asking, what kind of, how do you feel? Who hurts your feelings? Because we are always looking for a way. I mean, or we keep saying that uh, we never get opportunity to become something or we never get opportunity to do something. But now it looks like the opportunity is somehow knocking on our door and some people are chasing the opportunity away. Mind me, we might have different opinion when it comes to politics, which I absolutely respect. But somebody that comes out to say that, uh, I mean, take me back to slavery instead of uh, bringing a black woman to become a president that they should be in the kitchen or i mean like you know taking care of their husbands instead of uh becoming president but it is okay to support a white woman or a white man who do you this who did this to you let's get into this america i'd rather for black people to go back to slavery to let a black woman run this goddamn country don't do it say listen man i'm against anything with a black woman running shit motherfucker bitch you get your ass back in that bedroom and in the kitchen biden said first off he said he's going to hire a, a black female for vice president and that not he just skipped over what about what about white females what about any other group it just when you go down that route you you um, you take mediocrity and that's what they have right now as a vice president are you, are you suggesting she's she was a dei hire 100 percent, she was a dei hire he said he was going to hire and then and she didn't question black men is this what we're going to do we're going to co-sign with a bitch who has to turn sideways to see what was right in front of him or we're going to get into bed with mediocre white men whose greatest achievement in their entire life was being promoted to the grand wizard of their local clan chapter. Charleston White is a weak piece of shit. He is the very epitome of why women even started to think of having a conversation between choosing bears over men. Representative Tim Burchett here, the Republican representative from Tennessee, he embodies the fear that white men of such mediocre status have when it comes to black women. Black men, we should not find ourselves ever at an intersection where the rocket raccoonery of Charleston White intersects with the racial misogyny of a Tim Burchett. Now here's the thing, any valid criticisms you may have of Kamala Harris's policies or her past decision, those are valid critiques. But the intersection of these two weak ass bitches have nothing to do with that. The two reasons they are attacking Kamala Harris can be summed up in one phrase. She is a woman of color. Whether you like it or not, Donald Harris is a black man, and therefore his daughter is a black woman. Now, regardless of my differences with Kamala Harris over policies in the past, I will not sit idly by and let anyone attack black womanhood in my face. Let's get it. They got me fucked up. I wouldn't dare vote for no black bitch. Listen, I was raised by black women. I got a grandmother. I got black sisters. But I wouldn't dare put no black woman in no motherfucking position of the White House. The commander in chief of the military, a black woman. I'm sorry, but why in the ever living fuck do 
I give a fuck about what Charleston White has to say about politics or Kamala Harris? Hollywood Unlocked, y'all follow me and I follow you. I appreciate that. I see that y'all follow a lot of left-wing black content creators too. So that's a good step. But this shit should be journalistic malpractice. Why in the fuck did we need to know about what Charleston White I don't think we get what we- We talking about a- Who look like I, I. I'm not about to OD because I want to keep my channel. But I understand why so many black women are constantly on the defense, constantly looking out, and constantly begging black men to do better. Because a lot of y'all will unironically listen to somebody who's telling you that when the choice is between a felon who was sued for racial discrimination, him and his father, when it comes to their housing practices, and who called for the unaliving of the Central Park Five after they were exonerated, along with a litany of other shit he said specifically about black people over the past couple years and the past couple months that none of you wanna fucking pay attention to anymore. Clicking up with motherfuckers who think that learning about your history is DEI, which is a bad thing and we need to remove it from school, and a black woman who yes, has her own history, but we're not even gonna talk about that because the simple fact that she is a black woman means that we cannot allow her to be in power. Do you know how how brain dead of a take bro is sat in his car waffling shit straight out of a KKK manual and that's newsworthy. Charleston White couldn't name not 15 damn policies that he's paid attention to in the last calendar year. And we're interested in what the fuck he has to say about Kamala Harris. This internet clickbait culture, this news organization click culture where it's like, oh, if something happened, if a tree fucking fell down somewhere and the tree has 45,000 followers, we now need to know what the tree sounded like, pisses me off to no extent. Because it lends credibility to motherfuckers who should have their platform yeeted underneath a jail cell. This includes Candace Owens. Anytime motherfuckers report about anything she speaks about with black anything, it's journalistic malpractice, and we need to start treating it as such. I never want to see this shit again. Y'all need to fix the fuck up. Do better. This may very well be the saddest commentary I have ever made. But it is probably the most honest. And I need everybody that follows me to listen very closely to what I'm going to say. Because it involves this man. Sonia Massey and Kamala Harris. Now, y'all thinking, that's a big patch of land to be covering. But trust me when I tell you I can cover it well. I can. This man got on a video and said he would much rather see black people go back to slavery than to be led by a black woman. He said that. He said that. Let me show you something else. This Dusty right here thinks black women are gold diggers, lying, conniving, lazy. This man right here. Let me show you. Let me tell you what the connection between these two men. Sonia Massey and Kamala Harris. I'm about to say it's going to be painful for me to say, but it is absolute truth. And if you use your eyes and ears, you know what I'm about to say is true. In my youth, I realized that America didn't give a fuck about my little black ass. I realized it. From being accused, my brother and I being accused of beating up some kid and having his mother swinging one of them little itty bitty Louisville slugger bats at us, getting her retired cop friend involved, only to end up with my brother and I in handcuffs for something we did not do. And when the little boy showed up, he confirmed it. We never got an apology. I was 11 years old. When I was 13, I had the back of my head split open by a mag light flashlight from a cop who threw me on top of a paddy wagon and hit me in the head. I was called a nigger three times by three different cops because a 90 year old white woman was sitting in the fifth floor of an apartment complex and thought I was breaking into cars. Uh, uh, a 90 year old white woman with Coke bottle glasses who said that the man that was breaking in was wearing a white shirt and black pants with white shoes. And I was in a complete all white karate gi that had blood trickling out of the back of my head. I started to figure it out. Being a black man in America being stopped by police 
and having my sphincter squeeze up because I don't know whether or not that's going to be the last time I'm alive. I realized America don't give a fuck about my black ass. But the longer I live and the more that I see, the more I'm beginning to realize more than anything that even above not giving a fuck about black men, America really don't give a fuck about black women. They don't. They don't. Since Joe Biden decided not to seek re-election and backed his vice president, in the time that that has happened, it's only been a couple of days, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen more and more black men coming out saying that they will not vote for a black woman. And then their fragile egos, which are big as houses and as fragile as a soap bubble, decides to tell you why. Damn the fact that a vote for a, a vote for Trump is a vote for Project 2025. Oh, fuck all of that. Fuck all of that. That don't mean shit. What does mean something is, God damn it, I will not vote for a black woman because they're selfish, they're lazy, they hate black men, and blah, 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 blah. So if black men are saying this, I know what white men are. I know what white women are. I don't even have to gauge. I know exactly what they're saying. Because these problems are coming from black men. These mouths that are opening and saying this shit are black men. White men and white women have already declared that Kamala Harris is a hoe. Now again, I don't support either party. I'm a one issue voter and my one issue is against Project 2025. And I am voting for that on behalf of my daughters, my granddaughters, my nieces, my cousins, my aunts, my sisters, my community of black women. Because I understand America don't give a fuck about black women. They don't. Take the case of Sonia Massey. Go look her up. Take the case of Sonia Massey. A black woman who called 911 for something. I believe it was a health, welfare, whatever. And two cops show up while she's boiling water on a stove. One cop says you might want to go take that off before it boils over. That cop then in turn turns around and is looking in the rest of the house. Sonia Massey is literally taking the water off the pot. She is literally about 25, 30 feet away from second cop. Second cop screams that I will shoot you in your fucking face if you don't put that pot down. She said, what did I do? What did I do? And then he shot her to death. Then he decided to turn his body cam on. These were two white cops and a black woman. And we have a chance in America to do something extraordinary. Something that has never been done before in the history of this country. Something that would make lives like Sonia Massey, Breonna Taylor, Slandra Bland, Tatiana Jefferson would make their deaths mean something. And who is it that is the biggest ops to that? Black men. Not all of us, but a lot of us. Echoing the sentiments of the white patriarchy they so desperately want to be a part of. They will see a story like Sonia Massey's and they will blame her for her death. Because America doesn't give a fuck about black women. They will tell me I am disrespecting black women by being married to a white woman knowing goddamn well I have never disrespected black women. In fact, I celebrate them. Who I am married to does not change the fact that I am a black man in America. I am the product of a single mother. And I remember those words. I am my mother's son. In all things. But America doesn't give a fuck about black women. The biggest fear America has is a black woman or a woman of color being in the levers of power. But again, America is afraid of a woman of color in power at the highest office in the land. What they want to see black women do is twerk, show their titties, show their ass, so they can call them ugly. So they can reserve the right to call them hoes and bitches and shit like that. To be in charge? No. 
They're not prepared for it. Black women are the stalwarts and backbones of the Democratic Party. I mean, for fuck's sake, look at the Republican Party. They had a chance to nominate a woman of color to be their nominee. And they were like, nah. They went with the old, dried up, racist, 34 felony having white man. That's the Republicans. They're far behind the Democrats. And people like Sonia Massey will die here, like for comments. nothing and not even be recognized at all. Because America doesn't give a fuck about black like, women. Share. They never have. Not only do black women not have any allies amongst their own black men, not all of them, but some of them, they have no allies amongst white women who will use them and then discard them. They will take from them and give nothing back. And then these black women will be ridiculed for their bodies, even though white women are trying to get them. Their boobs, because white women, are, even though white women are trying to get them. Their lips, their, their hair, things of that nature. Because they don't give a fuck about them. They use them. We have a chance to put a woman of color, a black woman, in the highest office in the land. And not only are we getting backlash from the usual suspects, the racists and the white supremacists and the misogynistic motherfucking white men, but from our own black men. Because America doesn't give a fuck about black women. Sonia Massey is just going to be another nameless, faceless black woman that was shot to death. And a black man named Charleston White would rather us black folks be slaves than to have Kamala Harris as president of the United States. Somebody stop me when I'm telling a lie. You won't be able to. So this is all I got from this video, and it's very sad that I, I am something like this is coming from a full-grown man. And uh, I do not have any, we can agree to disagree, or you might actually not like anybody, but coming online to say for in for a black woman is like uh, going back to slavery. What does that mean? So it's okay. For, um, I just don't get it, because I just don't understand some people's mindset. I thought we are enlightened. I thought we are already becoming westernized. I thought we are, I don't know, westernized. I don't mean like being western. I mean, our hearts, I mean, being able to accept that there are some certain things a woman can also do, right? And uh, I mean, it's really wild that somebody would choose to go back to slavery instead of allowing a black woman to become the president. You can imagine the hatred. Oh, I don't want to use that hatred. You like, can imagine the mindset that will make somebody come out and choose slavery over a black woman. It's really sad, you know? That really tells you how, how people really do not like themselves or do not like their family or do not like people around them because, oh damn, I don't know what to say really. I am in shock. I don't know. And not just only him, I also saw a black woman, Fanida. She already deleted the video saying that, uh, I mean, she, uh, Kamala Harris is a black woman, she's a black woman, but it's a no, no, no for her because it is not yet her turn that it is time for Trump. And I am asking who says it is somebody's time? Panida, I don't even know how people gave her platform, but she's been misusing the platform that was given to her by coming out and wow, 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 wow all the time. But then I cannot pardon her because she's still very young, like 20 something, I think 22, no more than 21, 22, right? But there are some things you cannot excuse. Like this old man coming up to say this, that really, it tells a lot. And it's disgusting. It is not cool. It's uncool. Very irritating. 
See you all in my next video. Bye for now.